Eric Cortina here. So as you guys know, the machine has been set up and now it's ready to run. <laughs> One problem, I don't know how to run it. So today we're gonna start training me <laughs> so that I can learn how to run this thing. So DMG Mori offers training uh, and obviously I opted to get it because I've never ran this machine. So they sent a very qualified uh, trainer to train me and he's gonna train me for three days and after those three days, hopefully, I'll be able to make chips on my own. I'm pretty sure I'll be making chips on my own. So anyway, uh, he's on the way. I'm gonna go fire up the generator, fire up the machine, and hopefully have it ready by the time he gets here. it's happening I see the power company out there changing out poles so we're getting closer Morning. <laughs> this machine is designed and manufactured for well-trained operators who have basic knowledge of machine operation. Do not operate this machine unless this applies to you. To avoid accidents, well, I'm not well-trained, but I'm gonna be. All right. Here it is. Ready to go. So this is where the lubrication oil goes. I have the pump for a for a hose uh, wash down. This is the motor, it's not plugged in. If I need to, I can plug it in here, hook up the hose here, and then run it to the front. This is uh, hydraulics. Hydraulics. So this is where I'm gonna put oil if I'm if I'm running low on hydraulics. Yes. And then this is the uh, cooler for the oil chucks or the for the for the chucks, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, this is going to be a 32 hydraulic oil. 32 hydraulic oil, okay. We're good. Don't blow air, don't, don't blow, blow this air. out with air. Use the hose because air will blow chips under the under the weight covers, under the weight covers, under the, under the wipers, everything. And you'll end up with shavings packed up in the bed. Okay, we also have if you ever do specialty metals, you have a copper liner that can go in the parts catcher. Oh, okay. But you have Teflon in there right now, so I think that's fine. This is the parts catcher itself. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're lined in Teflon in here. And then I adjust the length just, oh, there's a set screw here? Mm-hmm. And this is how I adjust where I want it? Yes. Okay. And then from there, it's just programmable. Okay, perfect. All right, so Michael just gave me a, a old machinist trick, which is what? Old school. Old school. So if you're on your lathe and you're getting a little chatter on your bar, keep your back screws tight, but back off on the front screw and then slightly snug it and it'll dampen the vibration in your boring bar. So, but you play, you play with the, how much you snug it, right? And yes, so you just gotta listen to, where, uh, listen to it cut, it just, Slowly tweak that a little looser, a little tighter to where it's just putting pressure on the bar and it'll absorb the, uh, so, the so, so you're tuning that vibration on the bar with that. With the last screw on the block. You know how else you can do that? <laughs> so it's a tuner. So you're using that as a tuner. Cool, man. All right, so we are setting up this, uh, <laughs> this drill. Clearance is clearance, right, Michael? Okay. Inches a mile. <laughs> I got Michael here. He's training me. And of course, Scott with Tungaloy is here as well, giving us a hand with all this uh, craziness. But uh, we got, can you back the thing off so I can show what's going on here? 
Do not index the turret right now. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> right? So, we got some tools in here so far. This is a quarter, uh, three quarter inch drill that I'm going to use for my uh, easy tuners. It is not going to go there. It's actually going to go in a dedicated holder with coolant through, but we don't have that bushing yet. So we just put it in here just so we can kind of play around with the offsets and all that good stuff. Uh, but you know, I'm, you see I'm going to be able to have four different bars in there. I'm going to have boring bars and ID threading bars in this holder. Uh, of course we have a drill here. We have my tap for the OD. Let me uh, let me show you what's going on. So to make this easy tuner, right, we need a drill and tap these holes around the perimeter. So that's the drill, that's the tap. This one's going to be the angled uh, holder for uh, for the muscle brake to do the angled uh, ports. It's not set yet. Right now it's set that way, but it's going to actually be facing this way. This one is going to be another end mill that's going to do the straight slots on the uh, muscle brake and the side. This is the one that's going to be the boring bar. This one's cooling through. It's going to—it's double sided, so I'll put one here that's for the drill, right? and then another one here. Yeah, I'm sorry, that's for, for the drills. This is going to be my cutoff uh, holder. This is going to be the one cutting off the part. I don't have the, obviously I don't have it in here yet, but that's what that's for. Of course, this is my roughing and turning tools. This is going to be a rougher. This is going to be the uh, finishing, cutting, you know, the, the nice finish. This one does the heavy work. This one just does the pretty work. <laughs> and of course, now we have this one, which is an axial. I'm going to have a, uh, if I'm going to do any milling or anything on the face of the part. For example, if I was making this pallet right here, and I needed to drill or uh, tap these holes or whatever uh, That's what this one would do it would be it would kind of more likely do it here offset and they would drill that and then the turret would turn or the uh, call it the, the Spindle would turn and index and do that one and that one. So that's what this one's for and it's double-sided It can do this side and this side and then We have another one over here that we're probably going to do uh, deburring with this one and then this is going to be for my OD threading tools. It's going to be in here to do the threads on the outside. And then we have another empty spot. So that's what we have so far. As you can imagine, there's a lot of planning that needs to go into this to get all your tools in position. And uh, th now you understand why I did this and the double holders, right? Because I only have one station left. If I didn't do four here, I would run out of room. If I tried to do just one in every holder, I would be out of room so that's the reason you want to do stuff like that you really want to plan this uh, ahead and you are probably still gonna get it wrong but at least you're gonna get that much closer but so far so good now the other way you can do this is you can do a setup for every tool for example so if you're gonna do this then I don't need that many tools you can do the setup for this tool uh, for this part and then once you get it set up then you can run a lot of parts and then once you change to another part then you can break down your whole setup and rearrange it for the next part. Obviously, I don't want to do that. I want to have it set up. My parts are pretty simple. The only one that's more complicated is the brake, right? So, having said all that, I want to have this machine set up so that I can run the brake or the tuners or whatever without having to change my setup. One way I'm doing that, uh, which I've been doing for long, See, I've, I've been doing all this on a manual lathe and, and, and mill, right? So this all came about with manual machines. Whenever you do manual machines, changing tools is a pain. So I standardize all my stuff. So all my tuners have 1032 holes or screws around the perimeter. Because of that, I shouldn't ever have to change the drill and the tap other than for wear, right? So those should stay in there forever unless I do something crazy and I want to change it. But those should stay there forever. Uh, all the uh, the uh, the ports on this muscle brake, they're all the same size and everything. So all my end mills stay there, same size, same everything. So standardizing your tools is huge <laughs> because you don't have that much room. So whenever I design my parts, I try to use the same tool for all the parts uh, so that I don't have to be changing my setup.
And again, I did that back when I was doing it with the manual machines. Now that I come to a big CNC lathe, it's still usable because there's only so much real estate on the turret. Unless you want to break down your setup every time, which I don't want to do. Anyway, that's what's going on here. Michael's been extremely helpful. Uh, very knowledgeable guy. And of course, Scott with Tungaloy. He brings me all these goodies. Look at this. All these tools are going to go in that machine at some point. And every tool that goes on here, we have to touch it off. We bring down the, uh, the probe and then we just touch the tools off and all that good stuff. So that's what we're doing. And we have, we're only doing this side. This turret holds tools on this side as well for the sub spindle. After we're done with all these, then we're gonna do all these and we have to put another probe in this uh, in here. So it takes quite a bit of time to do all this, but once it's set up, it's, it should be done. And now we can run parts, like a lot of parts, hopefully. <laughs> oh man, it's been a long day. You guys see anything? Pretty dark out here. here we go all right so let me tell you what's going on here i had to leave earlier i had somewhere to be so right after training i had to leave the machine is pretty much ready to make some parts uh we're probably going to make an easy tuner just a standard easy tuner uh we programmed half of it <laughs> uh the main spindle side the sub spindle I'm still waiting on some tools to come in. So I don't have all the tools for the sub spindle. I have the majority of the tools, but not all of them. So that's what's going on. Uh, but the machine needs coolant. So this is the coolant we're gonna use. Uh, what is it? I don't, I don't know anything about coolant to tell you the truth, but this is what uh, I got from the uh, place where I'm getting my tools. They said it was a hybrid coolant, whatever that means. So that's what we're gonna use. That's what they recommended. Okay, uh, I don't have any water to this building. So I'm using these buckets right here. Uh, so <laughs> those buckets are about, I don't know, I'm gonna say two and a half gallons and three. So I'm doing about five to six gallons each trip. And this machine takes 55 gallons. Uh, <laughs> so, it's going to be quite a few trips. But, somebody has to do it, right? Anyway, uh, that's what I'm going to work on right now. And uh, Michael's coming back tomorrow for more training. Uh, I've learned quite a bit about this machine. You know, how to run it and all that. But, I mean, we're only scratching the surface i mean this thing can pretty much do anything but i'm just learning enough to get it going get it running and just so i can turn out some parts for you guys uh i don't know if you can tell but i'm a bit tired but it has to get done so i'm gonna get it done so we go outside and we see leroy over here working leroy brought all the pipe for the electrical Leroy! 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 You should probably put it over there. Somewhere over there. That's where we're gonna use it. Oh yeah, I just didn't want it to be in the way right now. Well, just put it over there. Because right now, I'm, a, I'm about to start using that stuff. Really? Alright. Yeah, Leroy. Anyway, uh, this is all the pipe for the electrical. The, the underground. All this. And uh, all this stuff, this is all my panels, everything. Everything that needs to happen to get electrical to the building is here. Uh, if you guys see off in the distance, they're replacing all those electrical poles. So it's getting closer. They're already working on that. And of course I have my pole right here. This is the pole. So now I can start trenching. Trench all the way to here, put all my panels in the building. So it's getting there. It's getting there. <laughs> uh, of course, 
none of this matters to you at this point because if you're waiting for a break you still don't have one right all this I call this the rule well I don't call it but there's something called the rule of the last mile which means that all this that I've been doing for the last six weeks eight weeks actually I don't even know but all this that I've been doing for the last however long since you order your break you know figuring out a machine to get you know doing the floors in the shop doing the electrical talking to a million different people ordering the machine getting the machine set up all that all that that all the sleepless nights that I've gone through none of that matters to you until you have your break in your hand right that's the rule of the last mile right until I do that last mile which is shipping the brick to you nothing matters so don't worry I'm still out here working really really hard <laughs> to get that brick in your hand but this is what's going on things are finally finally seems like they're starting to get some traction uh, this is the compressor that I bought I put it inside the building it lasted one day <laughs> you guys were absolutely right this thing's freaking loud in there uh, so we threw it outside at some point we're gonna have a slab here hopefully very soon and then all this is gonna be out here all the panels are gonna go there but anyway just giving you an update of what's going on here like I said the power company is working hard over there so we're getting that much closer and uh, if you've been following along again you already know this, but I really appreciate you. Thank you.